Welcome to the Revival Center of Paso Robles. We're glad you're here. Our prayer is that you'll be blessed and edified by this message and to be encouraged to live out the full potential of your faith. We are located at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California, and we invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. To learn more about who we are and what we believe, please visit us at alphabeth.org. Now, please open your Bible as Pastor Gabe begins teaching today's Word. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, and asked alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him, with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately. Someone needs to get this because I believe there's an immediate thing that God desires to do this morning. We've been, we've been accustomed that our healing is just going to be ongoing and progressive. Sometimes it is. But also we serve a God that operates in the immediate. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Okay, watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up Leaping up, stood and walked uh, and entered uh, with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he that had sat for alms at the, temp at the beautiful <coughs> gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which that which had happened unto him. Father God, bless the reading of your word. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't be seated. I just kind of want to kind of give you some background what's happening here. And then we want to move into understanding the benefits of faith. And then, and then I, you know, if we have time, I, we're, we're going to talk about how God was designed for you to take what I call a quantum leap of faith. Okay? This, is not, this isn't just a religious thing. Okay? Somebody here, I'm sounding my voice right now. You need something turned around in your life. Amen. Amen. You love God, but you you know, whether it's a financial thing, whether it's a physical thing, emotional, whether it's a relationship between you and your children, or just it's just been a tough time. Somebody here, you need an answer from God, and you really need an answer now. Amen. And I, I have no problem with that because the Bible says in Hebrews, in Hebrews, now faith is the substance of things. So what kind of faith? Now, now faith. Not tomorrow, not a hope so in the future, but present tense. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So now we find that Peter and John, they're going into the temple. Some interesting words in this passage. One, they went into, they, they went into the temple together. You need to learn to commit yourself to somebody that believes the way you believe. That, that, you, that, that means you can't commit yourself to everybody. Some of your best friends, don't, they don't believe the way you believe. Peter and John, they were on the same page. They were going in together into the temple for one reason. They were going because that was the hour of prayer. But, but they really didn't know that God was setting them up to go on a divine appointment. Even though they had gone into the temple on a regular basis, and I'm sure they had seen the man before, and hundreds, maybe thousands of others had gone into the temple and stepped over this man that had been laid by the gate called Beautiful for, for years. Now he comes by. I want you, I want you to see and there was a certain man that was laid, was carried and laid by the gate of the temple. You know, you, 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 you know, you know why they, 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 they send people by the church steps? Because Christians are normally easy marked. Yeah, we should be tender hearted. 
So for all those years, from the time that this babe, this man was born, because he was crippled from his mother's womb, so he had never walked, because we're going to talk about taking giant leaps of faith. <laughs> they saw Peter and John going in, and he was going to ask alms, and Peter and John did what most of us don't like doing. You know when you pull out of uh, uh, Albertson's parking lot and there's a guy with a sign? We kind of want to turn the other way and hope there's nothing, nothing, not a whole lot of traffic so we can scoot on by real quick. <laughs> because something just tugs in our heart. You know, and, you know, and, and then we start writing, well, I'm not giving anything to them. He probably makes more money than I do. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and 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 and, and, we, and we do that, and and they really, and and and, and the truth, some of them are truly, truly poor. I mean, they're, they're 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 really wanting to be blessed. But Peter and John does something very important here. They didn't turn their head and step over the guy. They, they he said when the man looked at them, and their eyes, he said their eyes were fastened upon him, and he said to him, "Sir, look at me." For the first time in this man's life, some church person said, look at me. Amen. I want, I, I want to make contact with you because, see, that's the way I preach, what, the way I do. And people say, Pastor, so you sometimes preach, don't look at me so long because I get nervous. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and I do, I, I make contact. I, 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 I've, got, I've got no problem with sin. Melly God is getting ready to do something wonderful in your family. We're making eye contact. Eyes are a window to the soul, and I prophesy that over you. Yeah. Peter and John said, look at me. And he looked down, and he was hoping to get some alms, and he, his response was, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I know you want me to give you money, but silver and gold, I don't have it. But what I got, I'm going to give you. Yeah. I got, and, and I got something for you that you've never had before that's going to go further than silver and gold. And the man looks at him and says, I, I, I want what you got. And the Bible says he reached out, watch this, and grabbed him by what? Anybody remember that verse? Not, not his hand. His right hand. His right hand is the hand of authority. Peter and John were getting ready to take authority over this man's crippled condition. Oh, glory. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Reached out with his right hand and pulled this man up. Now, let's go back. This man had never stood on his feet. He had never walked. Now he picks him up. Ooh. See, we're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about risk. You'll never walk in faith until you're ready to take a risk. Amen. Did you hear what I said? You'll never advance in your business until you're ready to take a risk. Peter and John, they did, I mean, there was, there was so much faith and risk going on in this passage. It was a risk for them to look at the man and say, what I don't have, I'm going to give you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Suppose it didn't happen. He reached out and grabbed by his right hand in the name, by the authority. By the authority that's in the name of Jesus. We gotta start talking with authority. Yeah. All right. We gotta quit asking the devil to let the people of God go. We don't ask him anything. We give orders. In the name of Jesus, let my people go. In the name of Jesus, sickness be healed. In the name of Jesus, victory dry it from its roots. Come on. Oh, glory to God. Amen. We just down and sell silver and gold. I don't have them, but I guess what? I'm gonna take you by your right hand, back because that's son. That's your place of authority. It is your, it is your will, and it is God's will and purpose for you to be walking, sir. You should have never had been at this gate for all these years, but today your life is getting ready to change. All right. Oh, glory yeah. to God. I, I can imagine what happened when, when, when uh, his mom and dad or whoever brought brought it. See, when they they brought him in the minivan all, all the time to the church. They probably had a pallet in the back of the minivan for the scribble man. And, and matter of fact, they were probably home, didn't have jobs because the man was making so much money. He was supporting the whole household. But they didn't know that when they when 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 the, when, when they got back to pick up Cripple Charlie, <laughs> Charlie had lost his job. Oh, oh. Well out there, where, 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 where is he? That's him in the temple. 
You know what he was doing? Jumping and leaping. Leaping. Yes. He was taking a quantum leap of faith. Glory to God. For the first time in his life, this man had never left at all. Now he's leaping for the first time. Yes. And when all the people saw him taking this quantum leap of faith, they were in amazement. Oh, somebody needs to get this. I promise you. Something is getting ready to happen in your life so supernatural that your friends and your family are going to stand back and their mouths are going to fall open. <laughs> How did that happen? Glory to God. Right? Because, there's, because there's, there is authority. There's authority in Jesus' name. Give me your right hand. Oh, watch this. Authority is being transferred right here. Glory to God. Amen. I feel it. Do you feel it? I do. Oh, watch. No! You're at a gas station. We just fill it up, brother. Now, watch this. It's going in a circle. Watch this. Watch this. No, no, no. no. Oh! Yeah, I got a machine gun. Glory Grab him by the right hand in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. For the first time, after the man jumps up, he leaps and shouts and praising God. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, you need to get this. He was leaping and praising God. Amen. Yeah, leaping and running and shouting and praising God. That was a verbal thing that was going on. Obeying God requires some blind faith. God said it. And that's what I'm going to do. Yes. I don't understand it, but that's what I'm going to do. In a few moments, I'm going to show you a, a very distinct word that the, the, the Lord gave me this morning. I woke up and I, I was straight to the computer, write it down because just, just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you. I, Jason, I have it on there. You probably have to scoot down and come back to it. But I, I wrote this down. I declare to you this morning that God is a sure thing. He is no gamble. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about you, but I'm pushing, I'm shoving all my faith on red number seven. <laughs> and let it ride, devil. Oh, glory to God. I'm taking off. I, I tell you what, you, know, you, go, you go to Reno, you go to Tower and Vegas and all that, you, you're going there for a gamble. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're going there in a pipe dream. Some of you go every week going down and, and, and paying for all these lottery tickets. It's a gamble. I mean, it's, it's one in how many millions a gamble. But let me tell you about God. Oh, glory to God. I'm taking all, all my faith and I'm shoving it on Red 7. I'm letting it ride. Glory to God. The benefits of leaping. Faith. God has called us to a place of obedience. There's nothing guaranteed, but we've got to learn how to put our trust in God. I, I, Chase, I'm not going to break, uh, break all this down, but I do want to give you these about six highlights. I did you write these things down. The leap of faith opens you up to new challenges and opportunities. This man at the gate called Beautiful, his life was getting ready to change because now for the first time in his life, he was walking and he was being made available for new challenges and new opportunities. Man, I wonder what he talked about the next day. Hmm. Oh, dude, the next day. He had, a, he, had a, he had a story to tell. See, we've got to retrain ourselves how to trust. <laughs> the reason we got, everybody look at me. The reason we got a problem, the reason we got a problem with Faith is because we, we've got to retrain ourselves how to trust. How many people in this room that have said, I just don't trust anybody? The moment you say that, you just said you don't trust anybody, you don't trust yourself, and you don't trust God. But God has given to every man the measure of faith. You have the ability. I'll tell you what. If you were walking in the gift of discernment, then you would get an understanding of who you can trust and who you cannot trust. Okay. Hello? So God starts revealing to us. See, so the truth is, but most, most people that I know, you got trust issues. And rightfully so in the natural, you have trust issues. But you should never have trust issues with God because God has never lied to you. 
God has never abandoned you. So you should never have a trust issue with God. Yeah, I understand, I understand having a trust issue with people. I tell you, they, they are, there are people that did me so wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure glad I'm not in the flesh because they wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Secondly, the leap of faith empowers you to establish new limits on your mind. Establish new limits on your mind. I can start believing different than I believed before. Let this mind be new, which is also the grace of Jesus. Thirdly, the leap of faith can cause you to become more creative. Wow. As long as I'm, as long as I'm not hung up on fear, I can be more creative. I can start doing what I had a problem with doing. Oh, somebody needs to hear this. There's such a call of God's life that you're, so, you're under so much fear you can barely get out of the house. That is not God. And there's ministries here that God is calling, God has set up in this room here. But you're afraid to step out because you're afraid you just might get shot down. But, but you got to obey God. you got to step out. you got to start believing. Hey, you got, you got to start believing for the big. Amen. I got no problem believing for the dollars. I got no problem believing for the hundred dollars. I kind of struggle with believing for the millions. <laughs> the same God that can provide the little, the same God that can provide the much. Yes. Oh, I, I, Pastor, I, 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 I got enough faith for, uh, uh, for, for, my, my, for my cold, but I haven't got enough faith for my, that major disease. Same God that cold. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, my wife and I, we, <laughs> we uh, I always play this game because I mean, I, just just about every place we go to, to a park or or uh, uh, oh, we went out to eat the other day and the restaurant was full. We came around the corner. I mean, just right in front of the restaurant was a park. I just, oh, right. so, I, I, so we got to think that I got parking lot faith. <laughs> you know, and she loves having parking lot faith, but she said, "Honey, but can't you have million dollar faith?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell you, if, if I gotta choose part of my faith or million dollar faith, I'm, I'm choosing million dollar faith because I don't mind walking a couple blocks. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise God. Number four, leap of faith can result in a positive outcome. You'll never know what's going to happen unless you leap. You got to put yourself out there. Number five, I'm going to go through this because there's a real meaning this I'm going to give you. Number five, the leap of faith will help you clearly define really what you want. See, a lot of you don't know what you want. But a leap of faith is going to put you in place, understand what you want. And when you find out what you want, and you really want, then you start going for it. Glory to God. And then number six. Once you have become accustomed to leaping, you'll break free from average living and average thinking. Why don't you become accustomed to leaping? I guarantee this man in Acts chapter 3, his life was never the same. I, I got a feeling that this man probably, he probably ran every place he went. Yeah, he probably jumped. I, he, he probably jumped all, all the time. Why? Because he had spent the first 38 years of his life not being able to jump. Now he can jump. It, cha it changed. It changed the way. That, 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 him responding to that, 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 I love that. I love when kids respond to people that I say. They hear it. Praise God. How do we make qualities of faith? A few pointers I want to give you here. Your chute will not open unless you jump. Hello? Yeah. Your chute will not open unless you jump. you got to quit being afraid to jump. You gotta quit making excuses why, huh, why you won't jump. Success always requires risk. Yeah, you want to be successful? It doesn't require risk. You want to be successful in serving God? It's got to require risk. I was talking to another preacher just the other day. We we're talking about uh, outside the area. We was talking about our our uh, prayer tent on Thursday, and he said, "This preacher said, oh man, that's pretty good. That, that takes a lot of courage." I said, really? Why does that guy take courage? 
all because of what people might say, what people might think. You know, we, we, we're parked there all the time. People drive by, a lot of people honk and they wave, and other people honk and they wave with just one finger. You know what I go? I go, thanks! Because they just acknowledge the fact that they saw us there. Oh, I wasn't offended. Not at all. You know, and they, and they, ultimately, they wind up coming back. I don't remember two years ago, I'm going to put you off. <laughs> yeah, but today, yeah, today, yeah, but today the one you get ready to get saved. Amen. Yeah. Fear only paralyzes your faith. Look at me, look at me. Quit saying you're afraid. God has not given you a spirit of fear. That's right. The power of love and sound mind. Quit saying you're afraid. God does not make you fearful. God makes you faithful. Oh, I wish I could, but I just can't. That's not of God. Stop it. Stop it. That's, that, that, that's the phrase I love counseling with. Stop it. Don't do that. Because that's not who you are. You are people. You are children of the Most High God. Somebody say amen. Yeah. You are children of the Most High God. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. There are people right here that you, you've been contemplating starting a business. Tell you what, quit contemplating it. And do it. Step out and do it. Oh, well, suppose, suppose it don't work. You'll never know if it's not going to work unless you start. Fear will only paralyze your faith. There's only two types of people in this room this morning. Those that come to church and those that are the church. Hello. Those that come to church and those that made their mind, I'm not just going to church, I'm the church. And if we are the church and we're people of faith, we're people of power. Of, of, of power. Real Bible people are faith walkers, faith talkers, fear fighters, and risk takers. I'll say it again. Real Bible people, that's you. Real Bible people are, are faith talkers, faith walkers, fear fighters, and risk takers. I'm doing this because I've heard from God. Because I've heard from God, I'm not afraid to jump. God has given every man to measure of faith. Romans chapter 12, 12, uh, 12 verse 3. For I say, for I say uh, through grace given unto me, that every man that is among you, not think more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly, according, that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. All mankind has faith. Hey, watch this. Everybody has faith. The lesbian homosexual, they got faith. The atheist got faith. <laughs> God has given to every man the ability to operate in faith. Satan comes to twist that faith, turn that faith into fear, and then we have faith in the wrong thing. But God's given every man the measure of faith. So we take that faith that God has given and we surrender that back to God, and then we start taking on the mind of Christ and we start having the God kind of faith. Somebody say amen. 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 The God kind of faith. Every man, they, we, they deal with fear because they deal with the fear of the unknown. They deal with the fear of the future or tomorrow. They deal with the fear of success. So, some people aren't successful because you're afraid of success. Some people are afraid of, afraid of money because you're afraid of money because you, you, you don't know how to manage it. So we, so we got to start dealing with these fear factors. If we're going to take giant leaps of faith, we need to understand those things that God has put before us, they are there for a reason. I'll tell you what, the, the person that sits in this room here and you still don't tithe, you know why? Because you're afraid of truth. And you rationalize it. Well, that's just Old Testament. I mean, that's fine, then read New Testament. We've we got people that are afraid of truth. They would rather sit, oh my God, I'm not talking about tithing right now, I'm just talking about general. You, you'd rather sit under a, just a biblical teaching that will teach you a lie than make you uncomfortable and tell you the truth. The 
presence of God takes us from where we are and raises us to where he wants us to be. Wow. That's that quantum leap. It's taking us here and leaping into the presence of God. We, 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 we've got seven or eight school of ministry students here. And that's what, that, that's what you guys have done. I mean, many of you have not been in school for 20, 30, 40 some years. <laughs> it's been a long time. And the very time we start talking about school, well, I want to, but I, I'm just afraid because I've been studying. But instead, of they, they, they bit the bullet. And, and they, they, they stepped into a realm that was uncomfortable for them. And because of that, what you were doing, you were exploding your faith. You're getting ready to grow. So God is moving upon us. Everybody look at me because uh, this whole year we've been talking about leadership. But well, God has raised up men and women that are saying, I want to become leaders in the kingdom of God. Not, not, not from the standpoint of want to be in the spotlight, but I want to be someone that's going to impart a change to the kingdom of heaven and to the kingdom of darkness. All right. Amen. Glory to God. That, that when you wake up in the morning, the devil starts shaking in his boots. Oh, no. There she goes again. There he goes again. And we find every opportunity to share the gospel. Yeah. We're headed over to Sarah Kate's house one day. There was a yard sale sign out. And I, I've got an addiction to yard sales. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was, they, they, they were just pulling all the signs and we went out there. And I mean, we bought a few things, but I found out I wasn't there just to buy things. I was there to speak to someone's life. And she was a believer, but when we began to talk, I gave her a card and, and it just began speaking to her life. I realized when I left, that was why I was there. I was there. Because we did that. I, I began to speak and begin to prophesy. Faith. Faith is the ingredient in life that will move you toward or away from your dreams. I'll say it again. Faith is the ingredients of life that's going to move you towards or away from your dreams. What do you believe about that? And then, now what do you believe, what, what do you believe and then what are you going to do about it? See, a lot of people are stuck in their dreams. Hello? They dream a lot. But they don't dare do anything about it. But faith will cause our dreams to start turning into reality. Somebody say amen. amen. I hope you're getting this this morning. I want to declare to you again this morning that, that, that you can make a quantum leap in your faith. You must believe who God is. Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must Believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Now let's see what this verse really says. So how does faith work? Number one, you must come to him. You come to God in humility. You don't come to God in arrogance. You don't try to impress God how smart you are. So what if you've been in the ministry 40 years? You don't come to God based on all the stuff that you did. You come to God out of humility. Lord, I, I, I'm coming to you because I'm, I'm believing for the miraculous. I believe that you have downloaded something in my spirit that I have never uh, seen. I've been stirred I've, and, I, and, I, and I've been moved. We must come to him out of act of humility. Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord God. Lord, I, I'm just a son. I'm just a daughter. Lord, you know I'm not much. I'm just a donkey that's carrying Jesus. We must. The Bible says that we must come to him. Then it says we must believe that he is. I like this. That he what? That he is. Is his present tense. You must believe that he is presently aware and involved in your situation. You think you're going through this alone and you're going through all this thing. No, no, you're serving a God. You're serving a God that not going to show up sometime later or not a God that was, but a God that he is. I say, yeah. You must believe that he is. Yeah. Is his present tense 
right now as I'm going through the pain and things that I'm going through in my life, I don't, I'm certain of God that it has not abandoned me. And in the midst of my crisis hour, God is still there because God is. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, somebody say God is. God is. Come on, say it again. God, God is. is. You need to get this. God is very much aware what you're going through. Then why is he allowing me to go through it? Because he's changing you. He's building you. And he's wanting to, he's wanting to promote you into a level of faith that you've never been before. Come on. Oh, glory Jesus. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must believe not only that he is. Number three, we must believe that he is the rewarder. <laughs> that God is the rewarder. I got this Lord. I'm working this out in my own life. I'm working this out in my own salvation. Yes. As I obey you, you're the one that's going to take care of me. Amen. You know why I like this verse? Because not only am I blessed in this life, but if my spirit, my attitude's right, then I'm going to be blessed in the next life as well. Glory to God. I want to make an impact in people's lives. Oh, when, when, when all is said and done, unless the, unless the Lord keeps you around for the rapture, but if not, that means I'm going to die someday. And, you know, some of you going to be around my tombstone. I want you to be able to say, I want you to Pastor Gay. He was an encourager. He spoke in my life. My life is different because of He's the rewarder of them. The rewarder of them that diligently seek him, desiring him more than life itself. Do you really want God more than you want your job? Do you really want God more than you want your kids? Sorry. Do you really want God more than you want you know, all this other stuff? God, I'm telling you something. You'll never get the fullness of God when you're giving God half his due. Lord, it's all of you. Nothing else matters. Suppose it doesn't work out. I'll be sad, but guess what? We're still going to hang on to God. Yeah. Suppose this miracle I've really been waiting for it doesn't show up. I, said, yeah, I, I don't know, but I'll tell you what. I can't let hold. I can't let go of God. I'm going to hang on to God. Hang on to God. To make this quantum leap of faith, we need to know that we need to know where we're standing and we're getting ready to, where we're getting ready to jump to. The quantum leap of faith takes us out of the natural, puts us in the supernatural. It takes us out of the normal, it puts us in the abnormal. It takes us out of the human and puts us into the divine. Glory to God. So how do, we, how do we get this faith? The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And then how do we hear? Except we have a preacher. So now anybody that's telling you that they don't have to go to church to be a Christian, they just lie to you. They, 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 need, they need to go to church to be a Christian. Why that? Well, Terry, maybe you don't need to be in church to be a Christian, but you got to be in church to stay a Christian. Why? Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can we hear? Except we have a preacher. How can we have a preacher? Except he have an apostolic ministry. He knows he's been sent by God. The words that I, that I speak, they should be spirit in their life. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. We, we got to hear. I, I try to take every advantage I can to hear. That's, that, that's why even, even when I wasn't here, and I, not not just because I'm the, I'm the pastor, but I, 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 I turned I turned on I turned on our website and 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 I, I want to hear what I want to hear what Bonnie preached. It was word that went down in my soul. Even though I was here last Wednesday night, and you, you guys that were not here Wednesday night, uh, Chase well, did Chase do a great job? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean Chase did a great job, great job. But I went home and I I was sitting at my desk doing some other stuff, but I put his sermon on me because there were some things that I'm sure I missed. And the words that I heard was, was the word of God that got down in my spirit. Life has changed. <coughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
Last verse I'm going to give you is Mark chapter 11, 23 and 24. And Jesus answering unto, unto, unto them says, Have faith in God. Matter of fact, the correct translation of that says, Have the God kind of faith. Yeah. But verily I say unto you that whosoever shall, everybody say, Say. Say. Say, because look, look, look at me, because I, I, I want to get this across, because I want you to take this giant leap of faith. And this, this, this is why I teach what I teach. There is something about the words that come out of your mouth. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When Daniel prayed for 21 days and you know, there was a battle going on, I'm sure there was a clashing of the sabers while he was praying because he prayed for three weeks and it seemed like he didn't get an answer. And God sent the angel Michael to Daniel, watch this, to receive his words. There's something about speaking. This is why every husband needs to look at his wife and say to her, I love you. That's why that woman needs to say to her husband, I love you. There's something powerful about the spoken word. Many, matter of fact, many of you are dealing with damages in your life because of words that have been spoken to you by your parents, by your, by your spouse or whatever, and just torn you down and just deflated your balloon and everything else because you heard those words. Everybody look at me. There's power in the words. I, I want, I want, I want to, we're, we're going to take, we're going to, we're going to take this giant leap of faith and I'm, I'm going to show you how to pull the chute. <laughs> when you jump, there's something about the power of your words. We live under a prophetic mantle. A lot of our situations is because how we have prophesied ourselves. I mean, before you crawl out of bed this morning, oh, it's so terrible. This is going to be a bad day. <laughs> Enjoy your bad day. You just prophesied it. <laughs> Amen. Don't, don't blame God. You prophesied. Oh, I, tell you, I went to bed with a headache and I feel worse this morning. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Hey, Dad, that's all right. You, you just go ahead and enjoy your headache because that was your, that was your prophetic word. I'm not saying you didn't feel bad, but you got a choice of prophesying. You can feel lousy, but you cry in bed and say, Lord, I know that I hurt, but guess what? This is the day that you made. I'm still going to rejoice in me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Huh. The words that come out of our spirit, words that come out of our mouth, will form our life and form our destiny. Look what Jesus said. But verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed. That wasn't a question, that was a command. That's looking at that mountain. That mountain is a situation. So you speak to that situation. That's not people. See, see, there's certain, I cannot, there's certain things I can't command in you because you have a free will. So I command that in Jesus' name, but if you don't want that to change, that nothing's going to happen. But when it comes to a mountain, it comes to a situation, it does not have a free will. It has been positioned under my authority. Oh, Lord, I don't know if you're getting this. That situation has been positioned under your authority. So Jesus said, somebody say Jesus said it. Jesus. Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, situation be removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, he shall have those things which he saith. Oh, he shouldn't have those things he believes. He shall have those things which he saith shall come to pass. Watch this. And he shall have whatever he saith. Amen. It doesn't say he shall have everything you believe. Belief is a brain and a heart situation. Saying is a heart and a mouth situation. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we take this leap of faith. Pastor, I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid to jump. Your chute will never open. You gotta jump. Suppose I jump and the chute don't open. That's why they have a backup chute. Now I'm going to tell you what God says. God says that he will send the angels to bury you up. Amen. Open the door. 
Mommy, don't be afraid to take Jasmine to faith. Quit making excuses that you know you should be doing. Don't rationalize it. There's some things I can't even afford to think about. Because if I think about it, I'm going to talk myself out of it. I've been doing this. Certain things that Pastor Dorothy wants to do around the house. I don't normally force her to ask me again six months from now. Hmm. No. I know it needs to be done. I do it. So I was going to come over and help me do some things in the house. He said, Pastor, we can do this early. Why don't you do it next week or the week after? Or maybe we can do it early next month. Oh, no, 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 no. I tell you, if I put it off the next week or week after next or next month, the next month will come around. Well, I got some other stuff that come up. We can't do it. But why don't we put this off till August? August is going to roll around. Now, I really can't do it now because I got such a thing. But we'll, 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 maybe we'll do this in, in October. Oh, bad weather's here now. We can't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> We're always trying to find a way out. No, no. Now is the accepted time. Amen. Get busy. Get busy. Do it now. Do it. Strike while the match is hot. Glory oh, yeah. oh, to God. Let's get it done. You want to get healed? Get healed now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This, 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 this faith, this faith you don't have to be time with these stuff. Immediately, men that have never walked, all of a sudden God formed strength in that man's hand. He had never walked. I'm sure his body hadn't developed that. But in that very moment, when, 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 when Peter said, but I've got to give you it by the authority in the name of Jesus. Watch this, watch this. This was created power. He spoke words of creation out of his mouth. When he grabbed that man's hand, the creative word that came out of Peter is the same thing that God did in Genesis chapter one. I told you, I told you last week. You know, we, we, you know, God says, if, if you don't think I have what you need, I will create it. We serve a God of creation. Mm -hmm. Sir, you've never walked before. I'm getting ready to do something for you that you've never had. In the name of Jesus, by the authority. Why, why can't that happen in my life, in my ministry? Oh, it can. It can. But Peter risked it. They stepped on faith and he risked it. Suppose it didn't happen, then that was God's problem. But God. God says, I'm looking at ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Amen? Yes. Come on, let's pray together. Oh, glory to God. Rabbi Shana. Lord, you are an awesome, an awesome God. There's none like you. But I, I'm not sure, right? I'm not too sure where you're getting ready to take us. But I believe it's going to be good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Spirits who go in this place right now. In the name of Jesus. Everybody look at me for a moment. Have you come to a place in your spiritual life where you know that you have eternal life? If you were to die today, which is a reality for everybody in this room, if you were to check out today, are you positive without? any doubt whatsoever that you're going to heaven. Well, Pastor, that's not really good, but I don't think anybody can be that sure. According to the Bible, you can. The Bible says these things are written that we might know that we have eternal life. So I know I'm talking to believers as well, maybe some non-believers in this place here. I might be talking to adults. I might be talking to some children. That are here. If you're not sure that you're going to heaven, I'm asking you to take a leap of faith this morning because I want to give you that assurance. Let me ask this question, then we'll give you an opportunity to respond. Suppose you were to die today and you were to stand before God and God were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? 
what would you say? Now, your response would be, because I'm a pretty good person. Well, goodness can't get you in the heaven. Well, Pastor, I've, I've, I've gone to church all my life. Going to church can't get you to heaven. Well, I was baptized when I was a baby. Because you were baptized as a child, can I get you to heaven? Well, Pastor, but I was baptized in the Baptist church and the Mormon church and, and, and JWs and everything else. And so I, I, I didn't hit them all, so I'm good. <laughs> None of that can get you to heaven. The water cannot change a man is always the blood. If you're here and you don't know what you would tell God, because I have an answer to that question for you. But if you hear this one, you're not sure you're going to heaven. And you don't know, or, or maybe you don't know what you're telling God. And just because you've come to this church or gone to some other church and, 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 and you're a Christian, but, but yet you don't have an answer to that question, well, you need to take care of that matter this morning. And I lean on stuff like this because this is important to me. Because I'm, conv I'm convinced there's, there's no better time than the present. As Sarah Kate plays, you're here this morning, you say, I'm not sure about heaven. I feel pretty good, but I'm not sure about heaven. I don't know what I would tell God. Well, I'm asking, I'm asking you to risk something right now, right where you're sitting. I want you to get, get out of that seat. I want you to come. I want you to stand right here. I want to pray with you. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to do some things with you right now. Don't wait for someone else. God wants you to be a starter, for a, a fire starter. I need it. Pastor, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about eternity. I don't see anyone moving forward yet, but if that's true, that all of us in this room are saved and spirit-filled, then we should be doing some active work for the kingdom. We gotta take our faith and we gotta start moving into a realm of divine works. Not works for salvation, but works of obedience. That's what I'm not sure. I'm going to heaven. I don't know what I would tell God, but I need to know. Is there one? rush through this stuff. But this is just as important as the sermon. Holy Spirit, touch our hearts. Then I must believe that everyone here, you're right with God. But you hear this point, you love God, you're saved. Pastor, but I definitely need a miracle in my body. And I'm going to risk it again. I'm asking be anointed with oil. Receive the prayer of faith. If you need prayer this morning, <coughs> Sarah Kate plays, come. We just want to pray, ask God to give you a miracle in your body, in your life. Anyone? Come quickly. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Women of faith. Come on, there's others. You need a touch of God in your body. You need you need God. You don't have to prove to you, but you need to know Him as Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healed you. Hallelujah. Father God, we're thankful, Lord God, for this day and what you're doing. I pray, God, the word that has been spoken, God, that it will be sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> God, thank you for the mighty men and women of God that you're raising up, Lord God, in this house. God, realize, Lord God, that you have wonderful houses all over this county, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, I pray, God, for pastors and churches all over, Lord God. I pray revival, Lord God. Yes. Lord God, over every church, Lord God. I yes. pray, God, I pray over the Baptist Church, the Assemblies of God, Four Square, Lord God. Independent churches, Lord God. Yes. I pray, God, over uh, pastors and shepherds over this town, Lord God. I pray that the churches are going to be filled, Lord God. Filled with an outflow of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh God, as you fill, Lord God, our churches, oh God. 
with people, Lord God. I pray you will set on fire, Lord God, the pulpits, Lord God, of this county in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That I, Lord, I pray for as understanding, Lord God, that we are laborers together with God. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for stopping in today and viewing the message from Pastor Gabe Abdelaziz. Our vision is that your life will be enriched by the teaching of the Word of God and experience victory in your life. We once again invite you to attend the Revival Center at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California. Worship services are Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information, go to alphabeth.org.